In today's video, I'm creating an app inside Power Apps. The app should accept a request. It can be for me or for anybody else and sends it to SharePoint. Definitely, I'm using Power Apps edit form because that's the easiest way I can handle that. But the challenge is that because most probably me or any other user is going to submit the request for himself or herself, I want the current user be the default selected value in the requested form field. So basically, when I want to create a new form, the default request should be submitted for myself unless I want to change it. In this video, we want to see how you can set the default value for a user field in edit form. What I'm going to do in this video is not important, but how I'm getting to that piece of information on writing this code or building this object, that's what makes this video interesting. Stay with me. We have something exciting to deal with. For this video, I've already created a list inside SharePoint called Equipment Request. So if I want to add a new request here, I can put a title for this one, like, for example, mouse. Quantity is going to be one, for example, requested for, I can request it for my, myself or anyone else. And boom, I can save that. And it's all good. Now, we want to insert the same thing from Power Apps. And to do that, I went to Power Apps and I created an app. It has a home page that it shows me the greeting as hello, Aliraza, and I've already put the first name in a variable. I've already covered how to capture first name or last name separately. Inside Power Apps, I put the link to the video somewhere around here. If you want to get there and watch it, that's a different thing. At the moment, I just have it in a variable and it shows the hello message. Now the application user can click on this button and it navigates to another screen, which is empty at the moment with a blank submit button that doesn't have anything. So I want to connect this app to SharePoint. I go back to my SharePoint, get a copy of this URL, bring it back to the application. We need to add a connection here. So I click on add data. I search for SharePoint, pick, pick, and I just paste the URL here and click Connect. There we go. I pick the equipment request and I say Connect. So now I can insert a form here. Form, okay, it should be hiding here. There we go. And I want to add an edit form here. Great. And make it a little bit larger. And I need to connect this form to that data source, which I will do that right now. It adds the fields here. At the moment, this is in edit mode, so I want to put it on new mode. I don't like three columns. I just want one. This one looks a lot better. One thing that I need to do when I go to the home page, before I go to that screen, I want to reset that form. So as soon as I navigate, I say reset form. So I will get a fresh form, assuming that somebody else has used the form before. Form 1, and I close the bracket. And because we are working with this form in the new mode, I really don't need to specify the item for it. All right, so let me just go to the SRC home, run this, and I click on new equipment, and you will see a fresh form. Now, what we are going to achieve, we want to make sure that the requested form by default when I create a new form, it's set to the current user. So if I use the application, the request by default should be for myself, unless I want to change it. All right. So for this guy, if I pick this guy, I need to do a little bit of surgery. So I need to go to the advanced view for the entire card and unlock it. Before unlocking it, I cannot really get into the details or the elements inside it. And let me just expand it a little bit. And let me make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it a little bit better. OK, if I click on this guy, you will see it's a combo box. So combo box can have multi-select items. If I click on the properties, you will see that for this guy, allow multiple selection is off, but still it doesn't change anything. Whatever you want to save in a combo box, they are already 
in selected items that we can set it here under default selected items. So if I click on this guy, it says parent.default, which for this example, we don't have parent because the four is a new mode. So we are not actually connecting to any specific record so it can capture it from the parent. So basically default selected items is blank. But we don't want it to be blank. We want it to be the current user. And that's where the challenge starts. First thing that we need to know, we need to know the format of the content inside this guy. The worst thing is that if I click on this drop down and I go to the items, there we go, you will find choices from equipment request requested for, which is not actually a choice. And I double click on this one. You see it's a table, but if I click on expand, each one of them is a separate record. Oh gosh, seriously? Yeah, this is, this is too much work. I don't want to go there. For us, there is a much easier way to figure out what's going on here. And that's what we are going to look into. The silver bullet that we can have and figure out what's going on inside those fields is a power up function called JSON. JSON function converts anything to JSON string, like JSON, this record, it should return something like this. It is a very compact string, but JSON gives us a little bit more luxury as a second parameter. It gives us the option to pick our formatting, and there are quite a few other JSON formats that we can pick from, but when we use, for example, indent4, it adds four spaces for indenting and gives us a nicely formatted JSON string, which is great. The only thing that you got to remember is that JSON is a behavior function. So if you want to use the JSON function, you have to use it inside a property that starts with on, like on select, on change, something like that. Now let's see how JSON can help us to solve this problem. I run this app and I just pick one user, for example, JSON Smith. There we go. I close this. If I can read the selected items in this combo box, I can probably simulate something like that, right? Okay, so let's see how we can do it. I don't need this submit at the moment. I just add another button here. And this button, let me call it, for example, get JSON. I'm going to delete it later, but at the moment, let it stay here. And the reason that I'm adding the button, I cannot simply bind the value of the selected property using JSON. It has to be under something that starts with on. Remember, it's a behavior function. So let's get back here. I add a label here. This label, let me make it a little bit bigger. Always, if you want to use this trick, just make sure for the overflow, make it scroll. So if the JSON that you get is long, it scrolls, it doesn't hide or cut off part of it. And now if I click on get JSON, remember the name of this control, which is data card value tree. I just get a copy of it. And when someone clicks on get JSON, I want to put the JSON value of that guy in a variable. I call it var my JSON. You can call it whatever you want. And I use the JSON function to get this value, but not the control itself. I need selected items of this guy and I close the bracket. It's a little bit unhappy and there is a reason for that. We are talking about users and users have some binary fields. Remember pictures and things like that. So for that, we need to use a different type of formatting. So I can use JSON format dot, at the moment, I, I don't care about the binary data. I just say ignore binary data. So forget about the image. I just need the core data for it. And I just save this. This time it's happy. Let me just run it. And if I click on get JSON, it works. The only thing is that the value that is in that variable needs to be bound to something visual that we can see it. Although if you just click on this variable, you can see the content here. It looks a little bit weird here, but that's okay. I just go to my label and I say var my JSON. So if I run it, this is the format, as you can see, it has a square bracket. So it's an array in 
Power Apps terminology. It's a table. So all we need is to add a record like this. Let me take it out of this context and examine it a little bit closer. And I bring it to JSON formatter. I just paste this guy here. And I say format and beautify. And now you will see this is a structure that we have here. It has the first property called claims. All right. And it has some prefix here, followed by the user email, which we can easily get. Department is blank, or we may or may not need to provide it. Display name, email, job title. OK, if this is the case, we can reproduce it here. All we need to do, we need to create a record like this and put it in a table that the JSON array represents. Great. Let's go back here and do it. So if this is the case, I can pick this combo box. I can go back to the selected items, default selected items. And instead of setting the default to parent, I can say table. Remember these square brackets? So we need a table that has one record like this. I come back here, open the bracket. Now we need to add the elements one by one, right? The first element is claims. I get a copy of it and I just say, create a record that the first property is claims and claims should have a value that is prefixed with this weird thingy. Just copy and paste it from here and boom. At the end of it, I need to add the current user email. And I just say concatenate it with user dot email. We have it here. Great. The second thing that we want to have is department. Department is empty. It's OK. I just pick the whole thing and stick it here. The only thing is that department in JSON must have double quote while here we just provide it as a variable or a table column when it comes to the table context. Anything else? Yes, we have the display name. Fantastic. We can get the same thing from here and stick it here. And luckily, we have the display name as well under user dot full name. Anything else we need to add? Email. Great. We also have this guy. And email is user.email. And is there anything else left? Job title. Yes, let's just leave it blank. And finally, job title. Let's leave it blank the way it is. And we close this curly bracket as the end of the record and close the bracket for the table. Hey, it already looks cool. So it has claims, department is blank, display name, and email. Fantastic. Let's run it and see if it works. Of course, it doesn't work from here because it requires the form to be reset before it actually works. So let me just run it, click on the new equipment request, and it picks the current user. Let me see if I can change it. Jason Smith. Great, it works. And the quantity is, for example, 23. And the only thing we need to put the submit together and see if it really submits. So let's say submit form, form one. And of course, after that, I want to navigate to SCR home, fade. Everybody knows that I love fade. And if you have already taken my courses, you know this is the wrong place to put the navigate. Never, ever put it here, always take it out of submit, you want to navigate away from this page only and only if the job is completed successfully. So I pick the form itself. I go to the event of unsuccess, and then I navigate. Because if there is an error, we don't want to navigate away and miss the error. So let's say run, and let's say mattress, I guess we could order something like this for the office equipment. Let's say four, and I click on Submit. C 
seems like it is successfully done. Let me go back here and I click on refresh. Jason Smith has added, but that was not the whole case. We want to make sure the record that we added ourselves here as default, this one works. Let's say another test for default. Quantity is two, for example, and I click on submit again. And if I go back to my SharePoint, let's refresh again. And bingo, this guy works. When you're dealing with something like this, you can come here and little by little eliminate and examine which value is actually used by your database engine or by SharePoint to pick up the value and do the lookup. And in this case, for this guy, the reality is that it's only the claim. So if you just remove the department, nothing will happen. Eventually, SharePoint will look it up. If you take out the job title, still it works. If you don't show the display name, instead of display name, you put, for example, first name, it still works. The only thing is that what you have here as display name is something that is being displayed on the screen. Gosh, here. All right. Well, let me do that one too. For example, var underscore user given name. Let me just save it again. I go back here, run, new equipment request. You see it puts my first name here and everything looks good. So let me just add title here. Test, for example, 01, quantity 4. And I don't want to touch anything yet. As you can see, we just put the claims together, email, and I even changed the display name. But as soon as I click on submit, it works. And if I go back inside SharePoint and I refresh it, it successfully worked and everything is correct. Although it's not a good idea to change the first name here, because if there are two Alirazas here in the company, there will be always be confusion. So it's a good idea to show the display name. The whole idea is that the value that you show here as a display name is just for show at the end. SharePoint uses only the claims value to look up the user. But these are all unnecessary details. The main point of this video is that if you use JSON, probably you will have open doors to lots of Power Apps secrets. The bottom line is that if you are building any solution inside Power Apps or Power Automate, there is one single thing that's going to save your day 90% of the cases, and that is JSON. In any problem that you are dealing with, if somehow you can get access to the JSON representation of the object, of the messages, that you are being staged behind this fancy UI, you are good. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, show me some love and push that like button. And if you are not a subscriber yet, well, I guess I don't need to say anything. Have a wonderful day.